Hey guys, this is MacHeads101 with another Ruby programming tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be introducing something new called a loop, and I'm also going to be showing you how to simplify our if statements that we made in the last tutorial. But before I do that, let me just review what we made in the last video. So, let's go ahead and run it. And it's basically a program where if we guess a number less than 5, it says too low. We guess a number greater than 5, it says too high. And we guess a number 5, and it says that's right. And this program is great, except that we have to rerun it every time we want to guess a new number. And in terms of making a program that someone might actually use, this is pretty impractical. You want the program to stay open until it's served its purpose. And that's why in Ruby and in most programming languages, there's actually something called a loop, which lets you run a block of code again and again until an expression turns out to be false, so until a comparison is false. Um, and in this case, the comparison we could use is b is not equal to a. So that way we could keep on having the user guess more and more numbers until uh, they guess the right number, and then the program will terminate. So let me just go ahead and show you what a loop would look like, and then I'll get into getting our actual expression to work. So typically we'd want to put a loop around all of the code we want to run again and again. So I'll put it right here at the second line and let's just go ahead and say while true and now at the end of the file I'll put an end and now I'll indent everything in the while loop just like we do with if statements we also do with while loops so now as you can see everything between the while and the end is in the while loop and then you know these are doubly indented now because they're in a while loop and an if statement that's fine so basically what, what Ruby will do when it sees this is it'll go here, it'll see this while, and it'll say, oh, is the uh, comparison true? And in this case it is because I just typed the word true here, so this will always be true. And because it's true, it'll run all this code right here. And when it gets to the end, it'll jump back up to the while loop right up here. And it says, is this condition still true? If it is, it'll run the stuff again and then get down to the end and then jump back up. And let's say this condition was false. Let's say I put false here. It would see the condition was false. And because of that, it would jump immediately to the end of the while loop. And it would jump to the next thing after the while loop. But for the sake of um, interest, let's just make it always true. So as you can imagine, what this will do is it'll keep on having the user guess a number again and again, even if they guess the number correctly. So let me just go ahead and run this. And I guess 4, it says too low. I guess 6, it says too high. I guess 5, it says that's right. And I can keep on guessing. And, you know, you know, I'm really right now. I just guessed 5 like 15 times. But um, so this is actually the, the simplest kind of while loop, in my opinion, is just a while true loop. It'll keep on running forever. And by the way, to quit a Ruby program, even if it doesn't quit on its own, just hit Control C and it'll stop. But anyway, let's go ahead and actually get a, comp a comparison here. So you might already have guessed, all we really have to do here is while b not equal to a. You know, while b bang equal a, and this will come out to be true as long as b isn't a, and it'll come out to be false when they actually guess the number correctly. But there's a slight problem with this, and it's something that I haven't introduced yet, but I'm going to introduce it right now. And th that is variable scope. So there's more than one reason why I have you indent code. You know, it's helpful to realize, oh, all this code is inside of an if statement and or, you know, a while loop and all this code is inside of an if statement. But it's also to keep track of variable scope, you know, and what I mean by that is, let's say, well, right out here, I set a, you know, and I don't have anything indented right here. So a is pretty much a universal variable it'll be valid everywhere. But B doesn't get assigned uh, until it's inside of the while loop. And because B is indented once, after it gets out of that indentation level, B becomes nothing again. So B will be a fresh variable every time through this while loop. And that is because it's declared inside of the while loop. Likewise, if I declared C equals 10 here, and I put S, you know, C in here, that would not work. Um, you know, you have to declare a variable in a scope and then use it in that scope or anywhere deeper. So I could declare a here and I can use it in here and I could use it in here. 
but I can't declare something in here, you know, in here and use it out here. Um, and because of this, after the end, b will become nothing again. So this while loop can't look at b if b is declared inside of the while loop. And to fix this problem, all we have to do is assign b its first value outside of the while loop. So now b is actually at the same scope as a. It's like pretty much a universal scope. And when we assign it in here, we're just assigning a universal variable b that will exist outside of the while loop scope. Now, the idea of scope might seem kind of confusing right now, but it actually gets a lot more natural as you keep on programming. You'll start to appreciate it. It really does help organization, you know, to not have a variable dangling throughout your entire program when you have thousands of lines of code. So scope is actually very helpful, but let's go ahead and run this and see what it looks like. Let's go ahead. And I guess four, it says too low. I guess six, it says too high. I guess five, and it says that's right, and then it quits. And that's because I enter 5 right here. You know, it doesn't run this. It doesn't run this. It runs this. It prints that's right. It gets to the end. It jumps back up to the while. And then because b is a, this turns out to be false. And then it jumps to the end. And, you know, if I put something here like program done, it would print out after they guessed it correctly. But that's unimportant. So that is how to do a while loop. And this is actually very helpful. You'll find that you'll be using loops a lot in the future when you're programming, and we'll be using them throughout the rest of these videos. So it's important to understand what a while loop is and how it works. So now for the next thing I'm going to do, which is just to show you how to simplify our if statements from the last video a little bit. So if you look at our if statements, they're all individual if statements, but they happen to be exclusive. You know, b cannot be less than a and greater than a, so these two things will never happen at once. And, you know, it can't be equal to a and less than or greater than a as well. So, you know, this will never run along with any of these things. So, really, these are exclusive. Only one of them is going to run at once. And because of that, we only need one if statement. And an if statement doesn't just have to be if and then an end. An if statement can have a couple different kind of tokens in the if statement that control the flow. So let me just go ahead here and replace this end and the if of the next if statement with else if. And I'll do that here as well. So this is all one if statement because here's the if and here's the end. And everything in between is actually part of the same if statement. But it's a slightly different syntax than what we're used to. So let me just walk you through what will happen when Ruby encounters an if statement like this. It'll see, ooh, if, let's check this expression, you know, right here. Let's say this comes out to be true. It'll run this line of code, and it'll run everything, and then when it sees an else if, it's like, ooh, I better get out of here, and it jumps down to this end. But let's say this comes out to be false. It would jump immediately from this to the else if, and then it would check this expression. And let's say this came out to be true. It would run this, it would run everything up to the else if it would say, ooh, I better get out of here, and it would jump to the end. And let's say this came out to be false. It would jump to this last else if. It would say, is b equal to a? Let's say it is. It would run everything up to the end. And if b isn't equal to a, which would never happen because it can't be less than a, it can't not be less than a and not be greater than a and not be equal to a. That's just not possible. So we're pretty certain this would be true if these two aren't true. So if it gets down to here, it's going to look at this, but let's say it was false, just for the sake of argument. It would, instead of running this code, it would just jump immediately to the end. So that might have been slightly confusing to you, but basically just think of this in English. If this is true, do this. Else, if this is true, do this. And else, if this is true, do this. So it's just basic English, you know? It'll run this if the first thing is true, otherwise it'll run this, and otherwise it'll run this. So it'll only run one of these at once, and it'll run whichever one is true first. So if this one is true first, it'll run it. It doesn't care about these. You know, if this one is true and this one isn't, it'll run it. And if none of these will, are true, it'll run nothing. But it'll only run one of these things that's indented inside of the if statement. Um, so that's just how else ifs work. 
And there's one other kind of token that's important to understand in an if statement. So there's if, there's else if, there's end, but there's also just plain old else. So if I put an else here, what this will basically do is if this doesn't run and this doesn't run, it'll just automatically run this. There's no expression here. You know, this is equivalent to else if true then. You know, it'll always run this if the other two are not true. So, you know, once again, it's basic English. If this, do this. Otherwise, do this. Otherwise, do this. So anyway, let's just go ahead and save this and run it. And let's go ahead and guess a number, guess another number, guess a third number, and that's right, and it ends. So what I've showed you in this video is how to do a loop based on a comparison. And I've also shown you how to turn multiple if statements into one if statement as long as those multiple if statements are exclusive. That is, only one of them is going to run at once. But anyway, thanks for watching. Feel free to leave uh, any comments in the description. You know, I was sort of confused the first time I saw if statements like this. Um, so if you have a question about that, feel free to ask it and I will get back to you. But anyway, thanks for watching. Subscribe and goodbye.